All right, the Reds, it's Talking Reds. Friday's Talking Reds, and I've got a familiar face with me. Uh, Jay Spear, and I'm sure you remember him from the Liverpool days, uh, now the captain at Blackpool. Uh, but now also doing a bit of fundraising, Jay, which we want to get you on first of all. Uh, a big mate of yours, Stephen Darby, um, obviously diagnosed with motor neuron disease, uh, but has very much sort of work hard to turn what is obviously a negative into a positive in setting up a foundation around that, uh, being at the forefront of fundraising. Uh, first of all, I mean, you, yourself and Stephen were, were teammates, weren't you, and, you know, playing in youth cups and things like that back in the day. So, you know, as, as well as it being a huge blow for Stephen when that news came through and him, him having to curtail his football career, I guess it was a blow for you, for the likes of yourself as well, for, you know, someone so close to you. Yeah, do you know what, mate? Um, I've been lucky enough to to grow up with the lad. Uh, we, yeah. both, we, uh, we were both at the academy since the age of nine. Obviously, I joined at seven, but he came like a year or two after. And we went right the way through. We won, as you just said, we won the Youth Cups together. We won the Reserve League together. And then we both made that debut to the, uh, together at PSV away. So to go right the way through the ranks with a, with a mate, it, it was just obviously the icing on the cake, what we did. Um, and like you just said, we've kept in touch since. Obviously, our careers have gone different routes, but... Uh, ourselves, our mums and dads are, are still very close mates now. They still obviously go on holiday with, with each other and stuff. And um, the news, as you said, it was a, a, a real tough blow. And I'll never forget the phone call that he that he gave me. Um, it was a real tough one to take. I think I probably cried more than he did. Um, he kind of said, oh, listen, everything's going to be all right. And I'm, I couldn't speak. I was like kind of speechless. Listen, he, he had signs for maybe about 18 months before the diagnosis had come. Um, so he'd obviously said to the lads, listen, he did it in like a, not a jokey way, but he did it in a bit of a banter way. Oh, listen, I did my hands that week here. I'm struggling. Um, and then we used to speak after training and he just started to see little effects of like, you know, what he, like, he's a fullback. So obviously taking throw-ins, uh, doing pull-ups, he was getting weak and he was thinking like, what's going on here? So he had signs, um, but they weren't, he weren't getting him down. He was still same old Dobbs. He was positive. He was happy. Uh, and then, obviously, the devastating news of this terrible disease is, uh, came. And as I say, I'll never forget that phone call that, that he gave me. And it's 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 Stephen and his, his mate Chris Rimmer, isn't it, who set up this yeah. foundation, working hard to raise money into, you know, researching motor neuron own disease, finding more out about it, and all the rest of it, and hopefully being yeah. able to treat people in the future. I mean, they've done lots of great stuff, and I think everyone's been amazed by the by you know the the bravery and the drive of the pair of them really. And this latest thing is is running and walking a hundred k in the month of May across yeah. various people. You being one of them. Uh, you've got a just given page yourself, Jay. Um, yeah. I think I think you're round about the three thousand pound mark right now. Um, mm. So so what's it involved for you personally then this month? It, run and walk. I mean, I guess it helps as well that you've got to stay in shape for for when the footy comes back. Yeah, mate, that's a little bonus for me to be fair. Um, listen, it it all started with Steph and a friend. Uh, they she came to Steph and said, "Listen, I'd like to maybe raise a bit of money through the month of May. I've seen a few things going on, um, and why don't we do it for the foundation?" Um, so it was just, I think it was Lisa and Steph that had started it. It was just them two. And then within the space of, I think, four or five days, we had over 350 team members um, who'd all jumped on. And as you just said, you could do 100K in May. You can do it walking, walking, cycling or running. There was the option of swimming, but obviously I don't think many people want to do the swimming scenario in the Mersey. So that got a, bit, a little bit binned. Um, but now, as I say, it's 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 kicked off. Um, I think the last time I checked was... This morning we were at over over one hundred twenty five thousand pounds, which is Brilliant. done an incredible raising amount of money, and, and obviously a massive thank you to everyone that's donated. Um, but like you said, the, the the big thing about the foundation is that it's to support families that aren't in a, a financial uh, financial way to to have the equipment and and to have the stuff at home to help people with MMD. Um, it's a real real horrible disease, as you know. There's there's no cure at the minute, so it's 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 a tough one. Um, and Dobbs' foundation is mainly to go and help support families at home and make the time as comfortable and, and, and as easy as possible for families who are who are less fortunate than others. Um, himself and Chris have been absolutely fantastic. Uh, they've been unbelievable. The attitude they have towards it of helping others um, has been incredible. And they're, and they're a joy to they're a joy to be involved. And obviously, the foundation's an absolute pleasure to be involved in. And I think that's why it kicked off so quickly with over. I think within the space of three or four days, we had over 350 members doing it. 
Brilliant. And has it become has it become competitive this challenge at all? Because I've seen you know Stephen Warnock running along the front, uh, yeah. doing a doing a big run for this. Um, I, I imagine you know you're all friends, you're all in WhatsApp groups, so you're all like you know I've done this run, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> it started. You know what, mate? It started off with a bit of like uh, obviously Steph made a group, hundred k in May group, and I God, there must there must be about over, over, I don't know about three hundred people in it, and everyone just sending in pictures of obviously their updates. Oh, I've done this, I've done that. And then a few have just started to turn a little bit over the last couple of days going, oh, what pace have you done this? Oh, how quick have you done that? Oh, well, you're still playing, but and you're thinking, yeah, but it's not like, you know what I mean? Everyone's having a bit of banter and a joke. And, yeah. But the main thing at the end of the day is getting the kilometres in. Uh, we've got young children doing it as well with the mums and dads, yeah. and it, it's, it's class to see. Um, but yeah, the little competitive side for a few of the lads has, has, has tweaked a little bit like. And for people who want to sort of help out, donate, uh, that kind of thing. I mean, you, I mentioned Jay's Just Given page. That's justgiven.com yeah. forward slash fundraising forward slash Jay Spear and 100K. Uh, we'll, we'll put all the links in the description for this on YouTube. So if you're watching and you're thinking, I'd like to take part, I'd like to get involved, I'd like to make a donation, we'll leave all the information there for you to get involved. Um Okay, well, wanted to get you. I've seen a tweet of yours, Jay, that I really liked, which is um, yeah. everyone was talking about, um, you know, it, it's May, isn't it? Well, it, it's it's the time when Liverpool in the past have won things, lifted trophies, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you, you put a tweet out the other day, everyone was talking about the Gerrard final, the amazing goals he scored against West Ham. And yeah. you put something like basically saying, I got a boss view of that because I was there with the. <laughs> <laughs> with with the squad right behind the goal and and I, I was it made me think that because you know um you're obviously captain of Blackpool now you play for Bolton you play for Blackpool and you moved on from Liverpool yeah but, but nevertheless though I mean you you stole for you know for someone like me even you know I'm watching thinking well you, you you've still lived the dream there you, you know you've got yeah, to yeah. play professional football you got to play for Liverpool you played against Real Madrid at Anfield do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. there's loads of little there must be loads of little highlights <clears> like that for, from your Liverpool days that st- still put a smile on your face yeah of course mate listen uh, like you just said I was a kid growing up wanting to support in Liverpool being a massive fan going to Hope, going to Anfield watching the games having heroes Stevie G being my hero and like you said, I was a kid that was fortunate enough to grow up and, and live a dream and play for Liverpool Football Club. Um, I was fortunate enough to obviously, like you just said, play in some of the best games that you could probably possibly play in. Uh, Anfield debut at home to Real Madrid, 4-0. Um, and then go on, go on and play Champions League, Europa League, FA Cup final, Carling Cup finals, uh, the Premier League. Do you know what I mean? So, as a kid, I've ticked every box. As you say, I've got unbelievable and very fond memories of my time at Liverpool. Um Including ones being as a fan, you know what I mean. Being at them, being at them both cup finals, the Gerrard final, the Mike Lowen final. Do you know what I mean? We went, we went as academy. Uh, they took us all down on on the train to watch them. So not just as a player, but as a fan, I've got nothing but unbelievable times at Liverpool, and I still obviously want us massively to get this league done and yeah. over and over the line, sort of thing. So I'm still supporting. Um, I still speak to quite a lot of the lads now as well, and we keep in touch. And as you see with the with the fundraising, a lot of the boys have been kind enough to support me and put it all over their Instagrams and stuff. And again, just a quick one, thank you for everybody that's obviously that's donated to the to the page. But listen, again, I've lived an unbelievable dream. Um, I can't not do that without the likes of my mum and dad, my family. They were. They sacrificed a lot for me to to, to get where I was. Uh, the Steve Highways, the Dave Shannons, um, you know what I mean? Right the way through, the Gary Ablets and the reserve coach. And then, obviously, every manager that I worked under the time at Liverpool. And at Blackpool now, Jay, League One, uh, the, yep. cap, the, the captain there as well. Uh, a lot of the conversations currently are obviously, you know, because c- it's the biggest news story and all that kind of thing about the Premier League, about Premier League clubs, about the yep. effect on Premier League clubs and all that kind of thing. I always watch it and do have at the t- at the back of my mind. But well, what about you know clubs lower down the pyramids? Yeah. How do, how does it affect them? And, and even the you know the idea of behind closed doors. I mean, if Blackpool or Tranmere or those like types of teams are, are playing games behind closed doors, they're missing out on a lot of money because to yeah. them, gate receipts is huge. Whereas gate receipts might not be huge to a Premier League club, of course. So I just wondered what was what what's the conversation around the pandemic around coronavirus been like? in terms of Blackpool and the running of Blackpool, getting League okay. One football back up and running? Right. Um, so when when we finished, obviously Neil Critchie came in, the new gaffer. Um, he hit the ground running. He was a fantastic. He was, he's been brilliant since he came in. Um, and then obviously that got cut short with the with the COVID. 
Um, but we got told the first thing we got told was we'll be back in on the 16th of May. Um, we've now obviously been told yesterday that that's gonna with the EFL statement saying that that will be at the minimum the earliest, sorry, the 25th of May. Um, that's depending if we obviously we still go forward. Uh, if I'm honest, the amount of things I've been told about what's going to happen, what's not going to happen, it's unbelievable. It changes every day. Uh, but a big point, like you just said there, um, a lot of League One and League Two clubs rely on fans. Uh, the income of the, the crowd of a Saturday, that pays a lot of the revenue. It pays a lot of the, la- the players' wages, etc. So lower league down into League One and League Two, it, it's tough. And from what we're hearing, um, I do believe that... I, I, I can probably see League One and League Two maybe not finishing, only because of obviously that kind of thing. And the chairman can't afford to to not have the fans come and, and play behind closed doors, uh, obviously with all the testing involved as well. Yeah. Um, we're very fortunate enough as a club. We've got a brand new owner. He's been absolutely, he's been first class. He's he's taken the club to a different level. He wants to take it to a to a different level as well. He's he's putting his own money in his pocket. Um, He's fortunate enough to have a, a few quid, but obviously that doesn't matter. He's a massive Blackpool fan and obviously we can tick on, but a lot of teams in League One and League Two aren't as fortunate as ourselves who've got a, a good owner and a good backing. Um, so I think the tough thing is we're kind of waiting to see what's going on, but the longer we wait, the more chance there is that it's, it's going to get cancelled altogether. And you mentioned there, Jay, briefly, uh, Neil Critchley. Obviously, we, we all know him from, you know, not so long ago, he was leading out Liverpool yeah. sides when, when we had the madness around the, you know, the World Club Cup and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, what, what have your impressions been of Neil as, as, as being the manager and, and you being the captain? I guess you've got a fairly close relationship there. Yeah, well, um, about, oh God, what we're talking now, about three and a half, four years ago, uh, when I left Bolton, uh, we, I had a bit of a, a bit of that, not downtime, but obviously time when we were still talking, negotiating, whatever. So Neil was very, him and Stevie at the time were very kindly let me go to the academy and train. So I was training with him quite a bit. So obviously got really close to him then. Um, and then obviously when he came into the job, knew him quite well. But as I said to you before, he's come in, he's unbelievably detailed on his training. Uh, the amount of detail he goes to on and off the field and meetings and stuff, he's he's changed the whole way and he's come in and like he said to us, listen, I've, he was at Liverpool for seven years. Um, he wouldn't have left. It was easy for him to stay. He had a fantastic job. He'd done fantastically well. Um, but he felt that there was a challenge there for him that with our new owner and new and the players and the, the way the club was going, he felt there was a new challenge for him to take on. And I believe going forward now, he is the right man for the job. He's been, as I say, the, the amount of difference he's made in the short term period he was there when we were playing has been incredible. And, it's exciting times for the club and he's a great guy. Um, he's real easy to talk to, but when he gets on that field, he, he does his work properly and you know when he's not messing about. Well, what about you now as well, Jay? I mean, um, I hope you don't mind me mentioning it, yeah, but course, you know, yeah. you're 31 now. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I guess I guess you're starting to think about, you know, what comes next after putty when, when you have to wind down the playing days yeah, a little of bit. I think you've done one of your coaching badges already, haven't you? Yeah, I've done the uh, UA for B. Is, is that... Is that the direction you want to go in, or maybe media? Have, have you been thinking about the, what's next? Yeah, of course, mate. Listen, I've got a family. I need to, yeah. you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I want to keep them protected. I want to keep them as happy as, as long as possible. I know football doesn't last forever, sadly. Um, and like you said, 31 now. So the last, I'd say the last two, three years I've been doing it. Um, I got my UA for B done sharpish, got that out the way. Uh, I was due to be on. UA for, a, UA for A this summer. Obviously, that's all changed now yeah. with, due to what's gone on. But as soon as possible, I'll get straight back onto that and get it done. Um, for the last two years, I've been going probably back to the academy most Thursdays and working with um, Yatesy, uh, doing the under-14s. Uh, Alex Inglethorpe's been incredible for me. He's let me go in and, and coach. As you say, Dave Shannon and Steve Howey are back there as well. So, familiar faces. And it's, it's good to go back and... For me, I, I suit the first day that I did it, the coaching. I felt it was the right path. Um, I loved it. I walked away thinking, oh, what a buzz that was. Um, I don't know whether that was because, obviously, mainly the fact that I've been there and done it at the academy. Uh, I've been been know exactly what the boys are feeling or what they've done and how, how hard it is to obviously make, make through to the first team. So, yeah, that's the path that I've, I've looked down more, more so. But I've done a lot of media work as well for, obviously, LFC TV. Um Critch's last game at Liverpool, I did that one for the LFC TV, which funnily enough. But no, no, either way, really, I think they're the main two. Uh, yeah. But if I had to pick one, it'd definitely be the coaching side. 
in terms of you know your own career and and that being useful to for when you're coaching kids i mean what what are your what what are like the messages that you're giving to them if you like because you know you mentioned before you can you came right through the academy and you know i guess if you're looking at it from the outside and you're you know you'd say well Jay Spearing is a success for Liverpool's academy because he comes yeah. all the way through. He ends up in the first team. And it's yeah. only sort of, you know, it's the quality of the buys, it's the people coming in. And, you know, yeah. eventually you're not getting enough game time for your liking. And I'm guessing that's why you moved on to Bolton. Yeah. But, but nevertheless, Liverpool get money for you. You know what no, I mean? Of course, so, yeah, so, yeah. So, so there's that type of the success as well. But well, what, what are your like messages when you look back on your career to someone young who's just starting out now about how to make it, how to keep on going, how to stay motivated and that kind of thing. Um, do you know what, mate? I did it. We did a conversation with a few kids a couple of, uh, a couple of months back and it was simply just be like, I know it sounds a bit dingy, but be a sponge because as a kid, you, you, literally give everything you got in the training session and be a sponge because the best, the more you listen and the more you try things, the, the, only the better you'll come. Anytime you have a chance to practice, practice anytime you have a chance to just listen to someone and get take any advice you can listen i know it's tough as a little kid and going yeah. through the academy you think with everything going on outside but just literally if you walk away off that field every training session think right I, I did my best whether it was good or not whether you walk away and go i give it everything i could then you should walk away with your head i'll die and know that you've given no regrets um that was a big thing for my dad my dad was on me saying listen don't leave nothing on the football field and never lose the hunger um, I'm 31 years of age now and he says to me he rings me every day after training how was you did you give it everything you haven't lost the hunger have you and you know what I mean he's checking up on me still and he's been incredible for me um, he's pushed me where I am today um, obviously I've had to push myself a lot as well I had a few setbacks here and there like you yeah. just said I came through the academy and done everything I ever dreamed of doing for Liverpool but at that time like you said when Rodgers was there uh, we had a fantastic conversation and it was just a game time. I'd had a successful season, obviously, with under Dag Leash. And it was just a game time. He couldn't promise me with obviously bringing Joe Allen in. No, no disrespect. Like, you know I mean, no, no, yeah. no hard feelings towards either of them. It was a, a very, very grown up conversation. And I was happy to leave and go and play games. So I want to progress in my career and keep going. Um, again, I've got no regrets from any decisions that I've made at any, any point. And I'm still thriving to do well, still thriving to, to succeed and, and keep going as long as possible. Can you remember, Jay, what, how you sort of felt when you first started getting on the pitch for Liverpool in the first team? Because I remember, you know, for me watching from the cop, one of my first impressions of you and what we always we talked about in the pub, if you like, yeah. was like, we were like, hang on, he's just come in there. Like, he's come in, he's straight on the pitch and he's, he's pointing and shouting at other players. Here. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> you know, he's, he's kicking off on, like, established first team. It's like... Yeah, mate. I don't know, it's a boys. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is, mate. I'll just... <laughs> off, the, off the field, right, I, literally, if you ask anybody, I'm completely the opposite. Uh, quite quiet, laid back, proper, into, like, the family man and all that. But on the field, I don't know, I don't know what happens. Again, it was... Down to my dad. I, went, I used to watch my dad, and my dad did the same thing. He was barking all sorts. Obviously, I won't say the words he was using, but um, he was literally non-stop. And he just said to me, "Listen, I, listen. If you can help someone, help someone. Talk. It, it gives everybody the help, and you know what I mean. Obviously, look after yourself. But if you can give any advice, help it turn easy stuff. Turn man on. You know what I mean. Just help someone else. It goes a long way. And I don't know. I've just carried on ever since, and it's not bothered me who it was. You know what I mean? I'm not the tallest man or the biggest man in the world, so I have to try and use something to get on people. Like you know what I mean? So it's just one of them things that I've wrote, took on as a role and enjoyed it. I love shouting at people and helping people <laughs> out, and <laughs> it's just it just kicked on from then. <laughs> Fair play to you, mate. I mean, yeah. I, th- I think most of us were looking at it thinking, you know, you're stepping on the pitch against Real Madrid. You know, you might have some nerves. You might not be. You know, you might be like, I've got to take my chance. And I think you know, we were all like. It's confidence, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, you got, you know what I mean, mate. You got to be in at that age, 18, 19 years of age, and you think you're coming on against Real Madrid, and you're thinking, God, like what, what else can you do? You know what I mean? You can't go on there and hide because everyone will go, oh, well, did he even get a go? You got to go on there, and enjoy it. I, I always remember saying to myself, my dad said, listen, if you ever get on, just go and enjoy yourself, and just literally don't forget the moments. And I literally, before I went on, I said, right, get the ball as soon as possible, touch it. And as soon as I touched it, that like sense of like relief just left everything. Um, and I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna run around. I'm gonna kick a few people and see what happens. And you know what I mean? It, it, it went well. It was a good night. And then 
I'll never forget, obviously, Rafa afterwards coming up to me. All the boys were like, listen, congratulations, class, well done. You've made your like, home debut. The, the, the fans are singing your name and I'll never forget it. Um, and then Rafa was like, oh, listen, you, you've got to go to the reserves tomorrow. You're playing Man United at Warrington. So I was like, all right, cheers, yeah, nice one. <laughs> but that's how good he was. Then he give you that hunger yeah. to like keep going and then, like he gave me a taste of it and I was thinking, right, here we go. I've got, I've got to kick on now and, and, and keep going and... So yeah, it was it was again. It was just massively fun and fond memories of it every single moment. Brilliant stuff, mate. Brilliant stuff. And just to just to bring it back, last of all, to you yeah. know, the the current situation where we are with the coronavirus, and obviously the fact that you know we, we're all we're all missing football massively right now. Yeah. How, how have you sort of how have you and the lads at Blackpool, you know, kept fit, kept focused, and all that kind of thing? And we've seen the Liverpool stuff, obviously. You know, they've yeah. been putting some stuff on socials like Zoom yoga sessions and all this kind yeah, of yeah, madness. Yeah. What, what have you been doing at Blackpool? Not not very far different, to be honest with you, mate. We were doing the Zoom calls um, only for like the stretching ones. He does like a yoga session every so often. We're doing like stretching sessions, and it's just the a chance for the lads to say hello. Obviously, yeah. we've got our own WhatsApp groups and whatever, but just to see, like, face-to-face and chat and ask them what they've been doing or have a bit of banter about someone, i.e., obviously, people growing beards, growing their hair, and you're thinking, oh, God, you need an haircut, you, or, you know what I mean? Or if someone shaved their head, they're, like, giving them banter, just anything, really, mate. But we're getting fitness sessions, obviously, what to do. Um, so a lot of the 100K that I'm doing for Dobbs, uh, I'm doing the work that, obviously, I'm being sent and then topping it up just to, like, kind of, to do that as well, so it's 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 working well for me. It's keeping me fit, it's keeping me motivated, and, and keeping me occupied as well. So, as I say, it's both both ends of the scale. I'm doing it for obviously Stephen and then for Chris uh, for the foundation, but then I'm also doing it for football. So it's a, a win win for me, really. Brilliant stuff, Jay. Well, as I said earlier on, uh, anyone who wants to sort of donate, help out Jay, help out the Derby Rimmer Foundation as well. We'll put all the links in the uh, in below this on YouTube, so you'll be able to see that. Uh, do donate if you can, help out if you can, a worthy cause. Great stuff from Jay and all the rest of them. Steve Warner Thank included you, as well. Uh, and thanks a lot for coming on today. Being a, being a pleasure to speak to you, mate. Anytime, mate. Thank you very much for having me. Nice one, mate. That Cheers, has been mate. Talking Reds today. <laughs>